do do some coffee quick and get rolling. I don't know what brew this is. It some fancy looking bag somebody gave us. It looked nice. I don't know. I do not know. Now that's sitting on go. Brittany, how are you? Yeah, <laughs> Caleb Seal, what's up, my man? Bro, I got the prophetic. Um, Word connection you saw is so powerful, so so good. The earth, earthquake. Jackson Hoff, what's up, my man? How are you, Heather? How are you, Felicia, Lisa, Jill? It's going fast. Tanya Rose, how are you, Priscilla? How are you doing? Awesome. Let's jump in here. Um, I'll do roster call real quick. We have new students this week. Typically, maybe one more time next week. We'll see. Uh, we'll do this fast. I may do some quick introductions. And I'm going to try and cover a good bit of ground this week. Hope you all had an amazing, what was it, Tuesday through today. Um, ben Antone, what is up, my man? Are you still on the West Coast? I hope you're still over there in uh, California. Chris and Frontera, what is up? Awesome, here we go, we'll go quick. Alaska, Alabama, Arkansas, Australia, the great down under, Arizona, Bulgaria, California, Canada, uh, Colorado, Costa Rica, Connecticut, Estonia, Finland, Florida, Georgia, Germany, Hawaii, Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, Ireland, Kansas, Kentucky, Louisiana, Massachusetts, Maryland, Maine, and Delhi from Vancouver, Mexico, um, Germany. Andy Scott, how are you doing? Joshua, it's going fast. Uh, Mexico, Michigan, Minnesota, Montana, Mississippi, or Missouri, North Carolina, New England, New Zealand, New Hampshire, New Jersey, Norway, New York, Nevada. Graham Rowe from Minnesota, Denise, Ohio, Daniel, Georgia. Danielle, sorry. Abby McCaskill, how are you doing? My man Luther from Tennessee. Hope you guys are doing amazing. Ohio, Oklahoma, Oregon, Pennsylvania, the Philippines, Puerto Rico, Rhode Island, Romania, South Carolina, South Dakota. Ben Antone, are you in Texas? Did I just see Texas? Wow. Uh, South Africa, Sweden, Taiwan, Tennessee, Texas. Uganda, United Kingdom, Virginia, Washington State, Washington, D.C., Wisconsin, Wyoming. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Sheila Kay from Wisconsin, how are you? <laughs> Mary John, hi, Heather777, that's awesome. Well, welcome, everybody. Excited to be back with you guys. Session 2, School of His Voice. Nothing of greater value, really, anymore, or ever was. So, um... Praise the Lord. I'm going to pray, and then we'll um, get get going, if that's okay. I have I didn't realize it, but I have 12 pages of notes. It was just flowing and good, and and so we'll see. I think I can get through them only because we need to move uh, move on. There's just so much on His voice, and um, but I want it to be full as well and, and land hopefully. So I don't want to go by it so fast. Demetria. How are you? So amazing getting to minister with you just recently in Tampa. There was a hurricane coming and we didn't really notice it, but praise the Lord. So real quick, new, new students this week, welcome everybody. Um, Google Chrome, best platform to house this. If you buffer, refresh your screen, you'll be back in with us. Faith Mock, how are you? Testimonies, dreams, and visions go to info at broadoglory.com. Try and keep the comments in context of the class because it can be distracting to others, although I think you can turn your comments off. I don't know how to do it. Um, your current address, if you could send that to us, if it has changed since you registered, um, because we need to send the school, the completion of the school certificate to you. 
social media if you want to share that would be hashtag s h no 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 s o h v stacy tillery how are you um as we'll still have the registration open this week and then we shut it down next after this one i think i think jasmine says she's gonna shut it down saturday yeah so you want to give everybody a shout out with that and um awesome excited to be back with you guys this week so let's pray jesus savannah heard how are you Jesus, yeah, yeah, he was Demetrius, so good, um, so, so good, but Jesus, we love you, be glorified, I pray, Holy Spirit, come glorify Jesus, saturate uh, these notes, the teaching, we say, come take over this, always, take precedent, take forefront, walk through the homes, heal bodies, liberate people by your word. Let the spirit of wisdom and revelation go forth in the knowledge of your will, in the knowledge of you. Transform us, I pray. We, we never just want to talk about your word and about you, but we want to experience you every time. I say, come, saturate the homes, the minds of the believers, and uh, let us see you rightly, more pure and true and clear. Let us hear you above all in a clear, clear way in Jesus' name. Amen. That reminds me. I know Kristen sent in, too, a very powerful. Well, it was fun, too, but it was awesome. And, yeah, we got tons of testimonies so good about um, from that dream last week of healing and necks and family stuff. A couple people that were car wrecks long ago, car wrecks in their necks were still bothering them. They were healed. And then one mom, I know Quentin Egbert as well, so powerful. One mom apparently was carrying buckets of rocks if that's your mom shout out in here i forget i was reading through the testimonies we got sent in they were so awesome but somebody's mother that day i think or something that was carrying rocks for a garden gardening project and pulled and strained and injured their neck and were totally healed the next day it was so good um had to go to bed with heat on it all and everything and the next day totally gone so 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 good injuries aren't from the lord either and uh but car wrecks and rocks and that's a strong mom carrying buckets of rocks. I hope they were small rock buckets, but anyway, that's a tough mom right there. But this was awesome, too. Kristen sent in. Uh, I want to share with you guys. Since the school started, I've experienced the Lord's voice flowing like a waterfall. Come on, Jesus, maybe so with, with all of us. Friday morning at 3.40 a.m., I heard a loud knock on a heavy wooden door. It had three knocks and sounded more real than a knocking in the waking hours. Come on, Jesus. My heart was pounding when I woke up fully. Then later that day, was working and saw a white garment come through and disappear physically with my eyes. So good. Slightly freaked out for a moment. LOL. Been seeing flashes and lights everywhere daily. Not sure what caused this influx of the kingdom of God and his voice to break through, but started last week. So good. Um, then when I signed my BGIA agreement, literally felt like I was pulled in, in a glory swirl and had to sit for a moment. So good. Come on, Jesus. Amazing, amazing. Kristen's been with us for years. She's cream of the crop, top notch. So powerful. Um, yeah, and there's those knocks again. I'm going to be touching on it again. I always correlate them, not solely, but a big part with Revelation 3.20. There's somebody else who gave a testimony. They were listening back through our Father Day's, Father's Day weekend YouTube. And right when I said destinies be shift, they got hit back by the power. And uh, that was amazing as well. So... Anyway, 12 pages of notes. I'll be kind of covering some ground, but try and camp out on the on the pertinent points that would carry weight, hopefully, and, and bless you guys. And super excited to continue with you all. Oh, yeah, a, f a friendly, fresh reminder as well. Next week, don't forget, this class, Session 3, will be shot live. The archive will be up all week, so don't worry about it if you have something pre-scheduled or whatever. But if you want to catch it live as well. Uh, it'll be bumped back to Sunday evening, um, right there at uh, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, shot from our BGI headquarters church facility right there. And all of you are welcome to come join us there, whether you're in the academy or in the church or out of town, or you can even bring a friend or whatever, but it's open to the public for this one time as well. So if you want to join us in person, 
um, I'm advising most people come to the Glory Nights and hinge that on to it if you want because we, we just so happen we're having a Glory Nights Friday night, Saturday night, sorry, the old ones are Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday morning, come get blasted by the glory and, and the presence of God. Those were more just ministering to Him, experiencing Him, just He be glorified His way. What do you want to do? Our eyes are you know turned towards Him, which really should be the the crux of all of coming together and then from that place you get ministered to from that place you you touch the lost and everything else but sunday evening together we'll be there live taking communion together i'll be able to see some of you hug your neck say hello get to chat to see you in person that'll be awesome so i would encourage you if you're already coming to glory nights or if you're not come and join us also that sunday evening at the church facility but also those of you that aren't just remember we're shooting it sunday and that'll be awesome. And um, yes, indeed. Also, real quick, shameless plug on the academy, but but also to the the application door is about to shut in September. So if you're feeling led, you want to jump into a two-year um, academy with us, an intense school of ministry with dear friends and high-caliber men and women of God from around the world. I'm so honored to be a part of. Them, but like Patricia King. Corey Russell, Michael Miller of Upper Room, Michael Quilianos, Jesus Image, um, Eric Gilmore, Daniel Kalenda, Ben Fitzgerald is going to be coming in. I hadn't announced that yet, but he's a gunner. Love Ben dearly. He's the real deal, so powerful. And he's not been with us yet, but Ben Fitzgerald, Backs Out Stadiums, Raw Faith, Strong Evangelistic Slant, Nathan Morris. Did I say Daniel Kalenda? He just was with us. Anyway, Sidney Jacobs. Powerful, high-caliber men and women of God, two years is dumping into you, myself as well, and it's shifting this fall into a full live curriculum, two years. Love the model because it's going to be under the anointing live. Love pre-recorded as well, but something to do with live. Matthew 13, 52 says, teachers of the kingdom bring out old and new treasures on display. And there's something with the fresh, current heartbeat of the Lord in the hour we are in that can shift by the month. So live is awesome, and um, what's beauty is we'll be able to take it all together and grow. And the the, the um, wisdom behind it with the those that we have year, uh, students that will be going into their second year, they'll have more. Uh, depending on how long you've been in the academy, you'll have more of the word and the anointing, the presence, and the um, just grinding as a community and building in character under your belt than the newcomers. But we'll be able to still be a tight knit community, grow together, but. Those that have been under the word longer, obviously, in its two-year um, ultimate graduation and ordination will be amazing. And the price is the same. I just want to let you guys know that because some people may be like, well, but it was this price. Uh, but because we now have an in-person campus, the overhead goes up drastically. You have electricity, uh, all the bills that go with that, staff increase and things versus just strictly an online platform. So, but the, the tuition you get in at, stay your grandfathered in for the full two years so that's i'd encourage you guys to take advantage of that before it bumps up and love to have you before uh, the application door shuts in september so join us come on come all plus what's beautiful is i'm pretty sure the logistics will work but every trimester we'll be able to open the door back open for those that have been with us can can jump back in and pick back up and, and get two years under the belt and be sent out for the glory okay so recap um, session two, School of His Voice. Those of you that weren't with us, with us last week, um, we went over the value of God's voice. As, as many of you guys know in these schools, I love to build line upon line, precept upon precept from the Word, but also from a structural standpoint, the foundation of it all and build from there. And so the value upon His voice and the stewardship needed with session one, really putting back the necessity on and caliber of value we should place on his voice in our everyday life man shall not live on bread alone jesus said so i'm moving quick i'll slow down when we hit the current notes but uh, the value and the stewardship needed for his voice because if that's not set in place we can learn all about his voice how he speaks but if it's you know if, if its value is less than it must be of utmost priority i have here um his voice is preeminent in worth, surpassing all others by merit and importance. Hearing his voice and obeying his voice is more important than life itself. Matthew 4.4, 4, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. You cannot even be called outside of God's voice, first initiating the call. His voice must start, stabilize, sustain, and seal all of who we are. 
We've been saw this over the life of Jesus Christ as the Son of God with His Father speaking three major audible installment windows coupled together with the secret place, all that His Father was speaking to Him uh, throughout the span of His call that even concluded His earthly call into His heavenly one until I you know, seat you up here until I make your enemies a footstool. Okay, this week, I want to highlight um, hearing the voice of God. And then next week, hopefully, if I can finish all this, um, we'll start breaking down the aspects of how God speaks and, uh, and teaching and, and sifting through that in a deep way, both biblically, experientially, by the Spirit. Let her alone kills, but the Spirit brings life. We want both. And every class, just like last one, I'm going to be praying for impartation, just an increase upon all of us. So be watching for that. I don't want to raise your expectancy and hunger that his voice will just, like Kristen said, just break open like a dam. I mean, the bursting forth. The hungry shall be filled. So raise your hunger and expectancy. Um, but so session one, the value and stewardship needed of his voice. Session two, tonight, hearing the voice of God. And I really want to hit two main points that I think are vital First, in hearing God's voice, then we'll go into the howls in, in, of His voice. So right here, I think it's notable enough to, um, to first, off, uh, first off, the most repeated phrase ever spoken out of the mouth of Jesus Christ in the entirety of the inherent Word of God is, He that hath ears to hear. Lamb of God, flawless Lamb of God in the earth, only three years of his earthly ministry. Most repeated phrase out of his mouth is, He that has ears to hear, in the context of the Spirit, meaning the voice of God. Having ears to hear is vital, the voice of God. Jesus repeats this phrase eight times in the Gospels and seven times in the book of Revelation, which is basically the only books Jesus spoke in, red letters. Gospels in the book of Revelation. Everything else is epistles or the Acts of the Apostles, but... Most of all the red letters, and eight times, and seven, and I am get excited over the prophetic implications of that, like eight, the new beginning of the covenant, and the gospels, and then seven to conclude it all and seal it with perfection. Just I, I start getting excited about that type of stuff. But watch here. Again, in Revelation 3.20, we see that the hearing of his voice is what actually makes the true union possible. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. I touched on this briefly last week. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door. It's the hearing of the voice that opens the door. That the opening of the door leads to dining with he and he with us, the communion. The hearing of the voice is vital, absolutely vital. I have here the hearing is actually what enables the door to open, which then actually even makes the true communion possible. And listen to this, the Greek origin for that word right there, hear, used in that verse, Revelation 3.20, actually means to comprehend or understand or heed even. And this is where the, the men and boys separate, or the women and the young ladies. Hearing, comprehending, understanding, heeding even, really hearing his voice. Okay, this is really where it separates. Spam call, 888. Do you guys ever answer those? Teasing. Uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, but triple eights are good. We'll take it. Triple new beginnings. But anyway, uh, to comprehend, understand, heed even, I have for you cannot even open the true door of fellowship with the Lord without first hearing, comprehending, and understanding his voice. Big difference. Big, big difference. Remember, have you guys ever hear, listen to people, but you're distracted and you're, you're hearing them? You're clearly, the, the voice, the, the frequencies are coming, they're going in your ears and everything, but you're not really hearing them. I've done it plenty. I know we all have, even like with my children. I'm like, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. Can you say that again? I totally was distracted. You know what I'm saying? I'll just tell them straight up. Please forgive me. I was, I was looking at you and I was hearing you, but I was somewhere else. And, and like, that's not what this verse is talking about. That does not open the door to communion. Focused intent, adhering to listening and, and hearing. So anyway, uh, remember I touched on this last week when God the Father spoke over Jesus before he was crucified in John 12 verses 28 through 29. This is a great example of what I'm talking about. Some heard, God spoke, 
Okay, the, the issue is never on God's end. He's perfect and true in all that he does. He's perfect and true in his nature. He's perfect when he speaks. How he, through his written word and both spoken, relationally, there's never any hiccups or problems on God's end. It's always on ours. When we're talking about communication in the voice of God. So here God speaks clearly how he's supposed to and needs to. And, um, oh yeah, there we go. I, I, I lost it. So anyway, Oh, that's funny, April James. That's so funny. Um, Danielle Silva, how are you? Um, oh, is that Danielle Nato? How are you? Doing? If that's you, I know you got married, though. That may be a different last name. Either way, welcome. If not, but uh, but this is a beautiful example of what I'm talking about. Because, listen, God spoke. That was true. And some heard thunder. God spoke over Jesus. Remember, right before he was crucified, Jesus is like, look, glorify your name. And uh, it keeps kicking me out for some reason. There we go. Oh, yeah, you did. That's awesome. Hold on one second. Um, um, so that is Daniel and I too. Awesome. So anyway, uh, God spoke over Jesus, and, you know, he says, I have, glor I have both glorified my name, and I'm going to glorify my name. And so it says, some heard God's voice, and it sounded like thunder. Yep, congratulations, Danielle, that's awesome. Here I am saying, like, keep the conversation in the context of the class, and I'm like, yeah, I'm spinning off with, that's awesome. Yeah, totally. Tracy, that's so funny. And um, some heard, and they thought it was an angel speaking to Jesus, right? Some heard thunder, some heard an angel, and those that truly have ears to hear, like Jesus is saying, heard, they can, you can hear God's voice. It was actually penned out in, in the Gospels. So right here, um, you even see uh, tears or levels um, of people's spiritual hearing. Some so dull they thought it was thunder, which is a very natural and earthly common occurrence. Thunder. It's like, oh no, God spoke. The Father. He spoke. He did His part. But on our end, depending on where you're at spiritually, it's like, oh, that was just thunder. It's a very common, weekly, natural occurrence. There's, a, there's that company. Okay? Then... Some thought it was an angel, which is comprehending with a little bit higher spiritual IQ, actually. I love that the word broke this down. The word went out of its way to actually say there were people that thought it was thunder. Then some thought, no, they discerned a little higher and thought maybe it's an angel talking to Jesus. And then others heard. Um, but clear, those that have ears to hear clearly hear the voice of God. And this is where we want to be. And I want to hit two main points that I think really um, support this topic of hearing the voice of God. So his value, the value of his voice, and then hearing it. It's massive. Then how he speaks his voice in, in the various ways. So I have here um, John chapter 8, verse 47. Whoever is of God hears the words of God. This is Jesus. The reason why you do not hear them in the context of the word of God and God's words and his voice. The reason why you don't hear them is that you are not of God. Okay, and I'm going to come back to this and break it down a little further from, from our viewpoint. This is massive. Jesus says it fast. You think, okay, simple. But then why is it that often so many believers that technically are from God in the spirit still can't hear God? Or there's a great obscurity, a misinterpretation. There's all kinds of stuff like this, and this is where I really want to go. But we'll, we'll circle back there, okay? And I'm going to try and gain ground and still land us by nine. I have here two of the top reasons why believers do not hear God clearly on a consistent basis or even much at all is number one. The obvious, and you guys hear me beat this like a drum um, in di from so many different angles, but it, it just it has got to be, and I really want to hit it from even a different angle tonight, emphasize a little more, but two of the top two reasons I want to hit tonight. Number one, the obvious, they do not spend quality time with him intimately. 
for him to even begin to knock on the door. This is massive and listen, far too overlooked. Sometimes it's so elementary we overlook it and, and there's so many believers that are just dull and on the tears of thunder or an angel or and one of the number one reasons is simply this they don't take the time to int intimately be with him enough for him to get to the door and knock for you to hear his voice to then open the door to come in and dine we do not get still as matthew 6 6 mentions where you go into your closet shut the door behind you we never yield enough of our life into this verse that would even enable Jesus to communicate to us for any length of time or consistency on a daily basis. This is why I emphasize so greatly the value and need in session one for his voice, because if that value is not there and it's not the staple um, reason by which we live, you know, then it, you know, we, we'll start to, um, come off of this right here, the, the leaning in in such a uh, valid way. But watch this. Um, yeah, I already said that. Oh, yeah, I, I was reminded by a, um, let me let me clear out of here, my iPad's acting funny. There we go. Um, listen, this is a great story. I was remembered by a uh, a um, what was it? Sadhu. He, he's, he's a Sadhu Sundar. Uh, no, Sadhu Sundar Savaraj. Not Singh was the first one. He was amazing. Um, but he um, shared this story once. He's a prophet from the Himalayas, like an Indian prophet, really, really awesome. Totally different flavor, but amazing. He uh, was at a church. I love the story. This really uh, helps hit this point home really well. He was at this um, service, and a man came up to him after and said, listen, please pray for me. I, I can't, um, you know, God won't speak to me. That's what it was. God won't speak to me. I pray all the time, every day. And I'm telling you, God doesn't talk to me. doesn't speak to me. And Sadhu's like, that doesn't, that doesn't add up. That doesn't make sense. He goes, please go to God. He knew him to be a prophet. He said, please ask God what's going on. So Sadhu goes to the Lord. He says, Lord, what gives that you hear this man? I know this is, is counter to your nature. I know you'd love to speak. What, what's going on? And so he's praying, and he goes into a vision. And he sees the man going to the exact spot where he prays and he gets before the Lord and he's in prayer, praying through the things of the day, this, that, or the other. And, and then all of a sudden the Lord, the Lord's there the whole time. And finally he gets quiet enough and still, and the Lord goes to speak and he gets up. Amen. And he leaves, goes to work. It happens. This is what he does every day. And the Lord showed him, he says, look, he's not yielding enough and, and being quiet or even in prayer and pursuit enough for me to speak to him. And this is far too often what we do. And we need to be reminded that Moses went up upon the mountain uh, to, to hear the voice of God. God said, come up here, I want to speak to you. He was up there six, seven days. The glory cloud comes down and he speaks seven days. Um, don't ever forget I have here that Jesus prayed all night before even picking the disciples to hear clearly from the Father before picking the disciples in Luke 6, 12. Um, I have here, yes, we have the spirit and the kingdom within and are supposed to know his voice as we are sheep. Um, I love practicing, practicing his presence. Okay, I know we have the Holy Spirit. He teaches us all things. These are both truths. Psalm 78 says that God's word is purified seven times over, meaning there's layers of truths. So it doesn't mean you throw one out with the other, that you, you take them all. You get super greedy and take all the truths, all the revelations at whatever depth they're at. So practice his presence, the inner witness of the spirit, um, you know, decisions. And know, we have the kingdom within. We know God's voice, but you still can never override this aspect of going into your closet, shutting the door. Um, Psalm 46, 10, be still and know that he is God. 
So a lot of times the complaint on hearing the voice of God is, is the lack on our end. So that, that verse, if you read it really for what it is, it says, Be still and know that He is God. It doesn't be still and see if you can hear and know God. Be still and try it out. No. Be, meaning, be still until you know. Be still until He speaks. Until you hear from God, be still. And so if that's one hour, praise God. If it's three hours, praise God. If it's one day, two days, three days. Um, you know, I was on a, a call earlier and and God asked this question. It's That's simply put, you shut off the other voices, be still until you know. And it's really, but see, that's where the value must be set in place. Because some of us don't value, if we're honest, we don't value His voice enough to pay that price to be still until we know. And then we're like, amen, did our duty, and we, we, we moved on. Isaiah 40, those who wait upon the Lord will mount up. Um, don't forget he, Hebrews. He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. It's the fervent prayer of the righteous that availeth much. That's deep into the book of James. This is all New Covenant here. So, again, we practice the presence. We have the Holy Spirit. We have the inner knowing. But sometimes I see that get taught and leaned upon a little too top heavy and we get lazy and we don't lock ourselves in our door pursue the fervent prayer of the righteous and, and so the level at which we hear his voice is is a bit shallow at times if i'm being honest you know jesus knew he said the disciples picking my disciples that i'm going to entrust the eternal gospel over to to shake the modern day world nah this isn't a little high five on the way to work this is all night prayer this is all night prayer I'm selecting the 12, one of them, to fulfill the actual natural occurrence of what I was already happened before the foundations of the earth, me being crucified, being Judas, other 11, nation shakers. No, no, we need it. So, and he knew, but still he modeled 100% uh, humanity. So he prays all night. So anyway, I'm going to camp out here too long. Simply put, we just don't sit still enough to allow him to speak we don't make room in our life for quality fellowship with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Now is the time, I hope, I hope you guys hear me in love, now is the time more than ever to simplify. Now, listen, the, the closer you get to the Lord's return, the more simple you become. I'm telling you, this is how it works. The, the crazier the world's going to get, the less crazy our world becomes because it's, it's, it's closer and closer into Matthew 25. Where the, I'm getting ahead of myself. But now is the time more than ever to simplify. And I don't want to step on your guys' toes. You pray. Susan Bergstahl, how are you? Please send my love to Kenny. Um, but just pray and, and see what lands with you. But I, I'm just telling you, cut off Facebook, social media daily. You don't have to delete accounts, but you know what I mean. The social media deluge that is invading your world with little to no true eternal impact within your soul. Cancel, cancel TV subscriptions. Who lose and you who's? I have you who's in here. I know that's a chocolate drink, but I was just with my notes. Um, whatever it is that is creating a portal of so many other voices other than the pure, unadulterated voice of God. This is another big problem I'm mixing in here. We've got so much distraction in other voices. It's very hard to, to hear with great clarity the voice of God. Our minds would be blown if we did a strategic calculation on how many other voices are coming into our world on a weekly basis, daily basis, hourly basis, compared to the minute percentage of how much time we actually allow God's voice to come into our world. I'm telling you, if you sat there and really added it up, mapped it out, we'd be like, no wonders. I'm not hearing God consistently or very clearly. Um, I have a whole other deal. I'll just get off of that. But um, just the distractions. Listen, distractions are one of the greatest hindrances to the voice of God. We need to simplify. And people complain about not being able to hear God, but nobody wants to pay the price to shut off all the other voices. I have that one underlined, so I'll say it twice. People complain about not being able to hear God, but nobody wants to pay the price to shut off all the other voices. Sometimes, look, look, sometimes it's costly to shut all the other voices off, but the value, that's why we touched it in session one, the value of once you get his voice and that door opens and there's communion and unity, oh my gosh, 
un unmatchable, invaluable, priceless. The value of his voice, when it hits you, it transforms everything about your being, melts your heart, transforms all of who you are into his likeness, illuminates, enlightens, lights the path, such clarity. But we, we, we're so, I don't know, you know, and, and we've all been guilty of this. This isn't a condemning thing. This is just like all of us. Let's just come higher, simplify, mute, 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 you know, all the other voices and pay the price to shut all of those off, to lean into him. And so you say, well, how long do I be still and tell you no? <laughs> That's the biblical way. You know what I mean? How long do I wait upon the Lord and tell you ascend like an eagle? And you're soaring in the revelation of his glory. That's, that's the life you want to sustain and maintain. And anyway, simplify the busyness of empty desires we continually fulfill, placing purposeless tasks all throughout our day and week and month and year. When they can be replaced with his presence and voice, start to really see what you can pull out, the distractions, the noise, the voices, and just start to impart his presence, his voice. His, everything will transform. The people that will most thrive in this last hour are those that are most saturated in his presence and voice. Day in and day out leading unto his return. Oil hoarders. You guys have heard me teaching this before. Oil hoarders with lamps burning ever so bright from intimately knowing his presence and truly hearing, comprehending, and understanding his voice. The Revelation 3.20 hearing, comprehending, understanding. I encourage you to do a great sifting of the distractions of life right now in this hour. The Matthew 25 versions, uh, virgins have one goal and focus in the last hour. I'm telling you, the more this thing culminates to the Lord's return, the true bride's focus is going to get so single, so simplified, so set apart. And we're going to be the crazies. That's why the, Jesus says in Matthew 24, the chapter before, that is the mascot paramount chapter for the end times. He's like, oh, yeah, they're going to hate you because of me. You'll be persecuted because we're going to be like the black sheep, the sticklers. Oh, you're too religious and legalistic. You know, all is love and freedom. You know, uh, you, you're going to see this big one world um, coming together around full out corruptness, violence. I'm not trying to be heavy. I'm just just telling you the word. Just had this amazing dream on the days of Noah. We're in. I, I may hopefully share it at the um, our next, uh, this glory night's coming. So now word, it's so good, but. But I'm encouraged because it, it, what's going to come out of it is this Matthew 25 bride that's so single focused. They got one goal in mind. Period. The bridegroom. They're virgins set apart, meaning there's nothing attached to them. They don't care about anything else. And they've got one lamp with one flame, slam full of oil and extra oil to keep that one flame lit after one thing the bridegroom. That's all they care about. There are no distractions, they don't even, they're not even interested. And now's the hour where you want to really start cutting them off. Because the more distractions there are, the more likely you are to fall into the camp of the foolish virgins. And come time, the dark hour when the bridegroom comes at midnight, you're going to find yourself having to go buy more oil down, down the road and a door may shut. You're not trying to be heavy, but I'm telling you, distractions and that price not paid to shut off other voices and just time invested into being with him. This last hour company, you can see it. It's, it's Matthew 24 in times, and then bam, there's this random company of these wise virgins that have one focus in mind, the bridegroom. We've got to find him. He's everything. That's the whole reason. That's the whole thing I'm after. All the other distractions aren't even there. They're there, but they're not in the parable because they don't notice anything else. They're after one thing. And then he shouts. Midnight hour, he comes. He returns. He shouts. <clears throat> So um, I have here, um, along the way, will we capture a great harvest? Yes. Um, along the way, will we teach and train and make disciples? Yes. But the ultimate overriding focus with little to no distractions will be going after him. Uh, number two. Um, Maybe bad weather. I'm losing my, my connection, but I may shut that off and, and jump back with you guys if it keeps doing it here in a second on comments, but good thing you can hear me. So listen, number two. Pretty good, Joe. Um, 
number two, this is really good. Going to probably be a little bit of a curveball, but it's big. I just think a lot of us don't don't connect these two, but they're really really important, and I, I hope I can make it land. Uh, remember, I said I said uh, the two of the top reasons why believers do not hear God clearly on a consistent basis or even much at all. Number one, we went through. Number two, listen to this: is our mind not being renewed? I have here, this is massive, all caps, three exclamation marks, massive, if you can see it. Um, the unrenewed mind, I'll maybe reboot this bad boy. We've got plenty of power though. Oh, how do you do that? There we go. We'll start it back up here in a second. The unrenewed mind is one of the greatest hindrances to not only hearing the voice of God, but most importantly, hearing the voice of God accurately. Um, the unrenewed mind is one of the greatest hindrances to not only hearing the voice of God, but most importantly, hearing the voice of God accurately. There we go. Maybe see here real quick. Hold on. <clears throat> okay. Sorry. I hope you guys can see me. I'm I'm not in it right now. can see me. Yeah, yeah, there I am. Praise God. The unrenewed mind is one of the greatest hindrances to not only hearing the voice of God, but dot, 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 dot. I said it three times. Watch this. And this applies to whatever means his voice is coming through. Whether it be inner witness, Holy Spirit, dreams, visions, angelic messengers, all these things we're going to be getting into. Um, but the unrenewed mind is one of the top reasons why so many believers do not hear the voice of God accurately or often, if at all. This is big. Listen, I'm going to build into it. But listen, I really hope this lands because this is, this is really massive. Um, yes, yeah, so good, uh, Susan. Watch this. The unrenewed mind places a filter over your spiritual ears. I'm going to back all this up with scripture here in a second. And everything that comes through that filter becomes distorted. And this makes it very difficult to accurately hear God and follow him with any type of precision. So two of the greatest hindrances of not hearing the voice of God, we don't invest enough time, we don't spend enough quality time intimately for him to even knock on the door to hear his voice to open and commune. And then also distractions, other voices, we don't pay the price to simplify but number two, the unrenewed mind. Listen to me. This is so massive. And not only is it, it's so far often overlooked that Christians are well down the road. And there's, because of this right here, there's still such a distortion and obscurity to God's voice and misinterpretation, if at, if at all, hearing right here. And it's so, obvi it's so obvious in Scripture, so laid out, but the enemy's done a masterful job. Obviously, the Bible says, do not be unaware of his schemes. This is one of them. If he can just keep a believer with pockets of their soul and mind that aren't renewed, oh, my gosh. He's, he, you're fighting an uphill battle already. He's already he, he's starting with like a five-point lead. And so th this, is, this has direct connection into hearing the voice of God. And we have to realize God did it all. His written word he laid out above his name, eternal covenant of highest stature we're now in the new covenant greatest covenant of all jesus paid it all did it all gave the holy ghost he had we have spoken word continually through intimate relationship but the unrenewed mind if it stays unrenewed it's one of the greatest hindrances to hearing god clearly uh, i'll start with romans 12 2 we all know this it says do not conform to the pattern of this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind this is paul he hits it 
over and over. Do not conform to the pattern of this world. That word conform means fit the mold. Okay, so if I had a bottle of water and I poured water into it, it would, it would conform to the mold. Okay? And anyway, well, yeah, no, I want to say it. So all humans, we know this, we're born into sin. That's why you don't have to teach a baby to buck you as a parent when you say no, or you, you know, to steal or take from a candy from another kid because they want the candy. You know, um, it's so funny. I'll tell you guys a funny story, but actually, it's kind of one of those proud dad moments. But uh, it's kind of connects, but not really. I just thought of it. I got a call one day from the the school the kids were at a young a private school before they went into homeschool, and my teacher's like, uh. Judah, he's he's just in pre-K, barely talking and walking. I mean, they're like sippy cups, right? Judah's on the playground, and he they just you play in color at that age and play with toys, you know. But apparently, a bigger kid was trying to take some of his toys on the playground, and he didn't know. He just like that. That ain't how we, you know. <laughs> you don't teach these things. It's just in mankind. He picks up rocks and he's like, "Let's go!" So he's throwing, he's battling with this big kid. I saw the kid; he was like twice his size. But Judah didn't fear him. He's like, "That's my toy." Whatever. So I had to get up to school. Totally correct, Judah. I'll light him up. They know that I'm old school. I'm, I'm don't spare the rod, Bible. And uh, but it's funny. And listen to me. I'm going to tell you guys: go with the word. Trust me. Don't worry about where society is going. The Bible says foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child, and the rod drives it out. You know, just leave you that. Anyway, read the word. But humanity is born into sin. And when you're born again, your spirit's what's the new creation. But your soul has to be renewed. That's why you work out your salvation. And he's forever made perfect, those that are being made holy. And so there's still a conformity. A lot of us don't know it. Um, there's such a molding of society and the way of the, the world that, Paul's writing in Romans 12 too, we've got to be renewed. And, and you, you don't conform, don't become the mold of the pattern of this world, but be transformed, meaning come out of the mold. How do you do that? By the renewing of your mind. So uh, I'll read further. I, I touched on this some on the school of the word, but watch this. Don't, don't conform to the pattern of this world, Paul writes, but be transformed, meaning come out of, transformed out of the mold by the renewing of your mind. Then, I have all caps, bold, and underlined right here. Th only then. Only once the mind's renewed, then. Watch it start to unlock here. You will be able to test and approve what God's will is. How do you know God's will? By his voice. And by knowing him, of course. They're all tied in. The renewing of the mind unlocks the clarity of his voice and knowing his will and his ways. This is big. And watch the tear, the tears you can walk at and still be a believer. I'm, I'm convinced heaven's going to, people are going to bust heaven wide open as believers and, and look. And I believe the tears that the Lord's going to wipe away are the tears of like, oh my gosh, my scroll, I had so much more I could have done and walked in and accessed of what the Lord saw me walking in. He's going to big cheesy, come in, love you. Well done with what, with what was accomplished. But I believe some of the tears will be that wiped away that like, oh my gosh. From the unrenewed mind, watch what happens. Depending on how renewed your mind is, then you'll be able to test and prove what God's will is. And watch the tears here. He is good. That's the first base level. Or well-pleasing, meaning it's good to God. Some of his will can be good, meaning he's like, that's good. That's good. Or you, if your mind's even more renewed, then you, you walk in well-pleasing. It's well-pleasing to God. That's why I looked at Jesus. He said, you know, who I'm well-pleased with. Job, you want to step into heaven and him say, well done. Then the final and top tier, perfect. You guys can read the verse on your own time when you get a chance. But then, only when your mind's renewed, then and only then. You say, well, man, I have the kingdom with me. It's the Lord and Jesus and shakalaka. I got baptized in the Holy Ghost. Oh, yeah. But it's crystal clear over and over and over in Scripture. The unrenewed mind is the greatest blockade to hearing God's voice clearly and walking out his will, his will with precision. You'll Then, once your mind's renewed, then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is. Good. Meaning base level, well-pleasing, or perfect. Basically, I touched on this last school. Double cheeseburger, 
99 cent menu this is good I mean when I'm really hungry or you know what I'm saying or chopped steak we're, we're doing well pleasing I'm talking about a really good one however you like them done onions and all that on it or mushrooms or none of the above if you don't like that whatever but well pleasing that you can literally be a believer and walk only in the goodwill of God where God's like that's good that's a double cheeseburger I'm glad you're doing something that's good or you can walk if your mind's more renewed this is the difference between believers I'm telling you many people are gifted gifts are irrevocable don't ever gauge people off the, their gifts although that's amazing and Paul says earnestly covet them I don't know if I'm gonna get through all this um, but but character and the renewed mind is how you see God rightly and hear Him rightly. It's so massive. Not only, but about a, a massive part. So good. There's the double cheese walkers. And they're going to go to heaven. They're saved. Well pleasing. Chopped steak. We can do desserts here in a second too. Sorry if anybody's fasting. Um, <laughs> April said mine is the bread. That's true. That's not bad. Uh, or filet mignon. Ribeye is pretty. They're they're both up there for me. Amazing. Anyway, pick your your choice. Perfect. And then however you like it cooked. Okay, good double cheeseburger. Well pleasing hamburger steak. Perfect filet mignon. The only way you you walk in the filet mignon of heaven. That's how God sees it. Is by the renewed mind. It's not works at all. God loves all three of them the same. He, he, his son died on the cross before the foundations of the earth for all of them. Loves you the same, but it doesn't change the fact of how this whole thing's set up. In the renewed mind, it basically gets all the chambers of your key just right to unlock the kingdom of heaven and the covenant fully made for you and God. It's really big. Really, really big. And so depending on how deep your, your mind is renewed, and that's why we've got to get in this word, Deep in his presence, shut off the other voices because that's the conformity. That's the mold of this world. And a lot of us, I'm, I'm convinced that a lot of us think, nah, no way. I, I know that's kind of normal, but but I, there's no way that there's areas of my life that aren't renewed. I think we'd be very surprised. I want to pray at the end that the Holy Spirit would reveal areas of our life and our, our mind actually that are not renewed because we don't know. That's the problem when it's not renewed. You don't know. You know, just like that, that's the definition of deception. You don't know you're deceived. You're deceived. You don't know that. You know what I mean. So, but when it gets renewed, you his voice just whew, clarity, his nature, his will. It's all fillet, fillet, fillet. And and then before God, that's how he sees it. He's like, yes, that's what I, I my son died for. But until you, your mind's renewed, it's not like you're earning anything. You're just finally rightly postured under that which was already made available in heaven. That's what it is. And his voice is in that channel so loud and clear and consistent and frequent. So let's let's go for the filet mignon, shall we? They need a um, an emoji for that. So I have here, um, and we, we see here we uh, we see here that the renewal of the mind or lack thereof is what is in direct connection to where you fall out in this category. Merely good, well pleasing, or ultimately perfect. The renewal of the mind is vital to hearing and knowing God's voice and will. Uh, that's an entire school too, the school of the renewed mind. I may I may try and do one in the academy, but my my gosh, it's so amazing and awesome, you know, what God's made available for us. But it's it's a price paid to dig deep into this, and it in it, it, it's a price paid. To, the renewed mind is the narrow path. There's a price paid for the renewed mind. It's easy to conform to the world and their beliefs, and yeah, and in the broad path, but it leads to destruction. Full life is the compressed way. And it doesn't make sense. And logic is not often, if at all, there. And so it's the way of faith in, in not leaning upon your own understanding and how you think things ought to be and should be. No, it's his voice, his voice only, his love. Anyway, I'm, I'm going to get off on there. Uh, John 8, 47, I want to go back to this. Whoever is of God hears the words of God. Jesus says, the reason why you don't, you do not hear them, his voice and his words, is that you are not of God. Prime example, the unrenewed mind, Peter, born again, top general under Jesus Christ. He's like, changing your name, P 
Peter, because upon this rock I'm going to build my church, spokesman on the day of Pentecost. But even Peter, in a moment, acted in an unrenewed mind, and Jesus rebukes him, remember. They're, they're, uh, he talks about he's going to basically his trip to the cross. Peter says, not on my watch. I'll take him out. I'll protect you, da-da-da-da-da. Jesus rebukes Peter that the, that's going to be literally one of the foundational apostles of the church. He says, get behind me, Satan. Why? You have the mind of man. Your mind's not renewed. So you can't hear clearly what I'm telling you right now, where i got to go to save all of mankind. You, you, it's obscure. There's a blockade there. Your mind's not renewed. He rebuked him hard. And so, of course, this applies to unbelievers, but also what I'm going to propose, uh, I'll, I'll continue. So often there, uh, John 8, 47, whoever is of God hears the words of God. The reason why you do not hear them, God's words and his voice, is that you are not of God. So often there are areas of our soul or mind that are not renewed and thereby are not of God. And because of that very reason, we cannot hear God. Jesus said it out of his own mouth. If something's not of God, it can't hear God. And the Bible is clear. Our soul can, can be unrenewed, which is not of God. And so those areas, it's very hard. It creates blockades to hear God clearly, if at all. Or you start to hear it with filters. It distorts. And that's how so many people I'm getting ahead of myself. The reason you do not hear God is it is not of God. So when we still have unrenewed belief patterns or ideologies or mindsets or philosophies, which is really just a focused way of thinking, that have any conformity to this world, those very areas of our life cannot hear God. And listen, this is so big in this last hour that we need leaders with, with crystal clear, pure minds renewed. Because there's people that are very gifted in leadership. They were meant to be. It's upon them. You see it. They lead well. They see with great vision. They've got something on their life that leads and pulls a generation. But there's certain areas that aren't renewed. And it's getting on this next generation that aren't really pure to God's nature and voice and will. And they hear through distorted ways. Thereby they see distorted. And they display distorted. And, and, and we don't, you know, all of us want to become more and more renewed. Um, again, it's a totally different school in and of itself, but, but I have here, uh, this is why so many believers don't walk in healing. And the list goes on, oh, I just picked a few, the list goes on and on and on and on. While they have a treasure chest of perfect healing and wholeness made available through the voice and covenant of God. Remember, God says, this is my son, hear him, exclamation mark, hear him. Well, Jesus, if we hear him and watch his life... He removes our sin and sickness. Sin and sickness are always together too, by the way. You see it in Scripture. As far as the east is from the west, by his stripes you were healed. 1 Peter 2.24. So I'm going fast. Well, listen to 1 Peter 2.24. Who his own self bore our sins in his own body. God's like, this is my son. Listen to him. Watch him. Listen. Renew your mind to everything he says. Every way he walks, if he moves his pinky to the right, you, you do that. Renew to that. Don't be conformed to this mold. Hear him. Who his, Jesus Christ, own self bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness. And then why did they throw this in here? By whose stripes you were healed. Past tense. Healing and sin, sin and sickness are one and the same. You shouldn't be sick any more than you live in sin and vice versa. Jesus nailed them both on the tree and they were past tense. So my whole point is imagine you have a treasure chest here. Do I still have any gadgets? Look, I've still got the red door. Still hanging around with the knocker. What was that? The school of knowing him? That one won't work. Um... No, I think I took the gemstones out. Anyway, let's just imagine we have a, um, still got the back scratch here, treasure chest fully available and open of healing because it is. It was already done. You were. Just as much as your sins are removed, 
a lot of times it's easy for us to realize our sins are removed, but we don't realize our sicknesses were too. They were. They're tacked on that same tree with your sins. Whatever it is. Well, but I have this symptom. That, 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 that's a lie. I'm not yielding to it. I, I have no time accepting that. It's not real. Well, you're in denial. Okay. Well, you believe it and hang on to it. I'm going to know the word and watch it. it, it what will happen to sickness through time is you keep leaning on the word and your mind's renewed. You can hear God's voice clearly and like hear him. Oh, easy. Yeah, no, I know what he says. He's already looking down going, what are you doing? You've got a treasure chest full of complete wholeness and healing that I already paid for way back then. And so you can hear clearly, and then you, you hear clearly, so you preach more clearly. You see more clearly over others. Anyway, the mind renewed. But things that aren't reality try to hang on, and as long as your mind's renewed, they slip off. They can't you can stay for any length of time. Anyway, uh, or many don't walk in freedom from depression or don't walk in abundance and don't know God in this arena, nor can hear his voice in it. I'm telling you, when the mind's not renewed, we don't know it, but we, the enemy loves it because he's like, I can, he sees it. He's like, no, no, I'm good. Whatever, just keep those areas of their mind unrenewed. And then I've got a blockade there I can work for. I've got a stronghold, number one, and I'm going to show that to you later. But also God's voice can't get through clearly. Thereby, it doesn't become experiential. And we know it, we, we know it by head knowledge, but the mind has to be renewed. And that's how it becomes deep within you. It'd be like if I ate a protein bar and it goes into my muscles and becomes part of me. That's a mind being renewed. That's why we go deep in the Word, deep in His presence, pray in the Holy Ghost, saturated by His presence. Not just head knowledge, you know a verse. Many of us know that and can quote it. But renewed, it becomes you experientially. Anyway, or uh, many don't know true love, so they walk in many areas of fear. And no, I'm not, I'm not picking at anybody. We all need grace. And I'm just encouraging. This is so beautiful, uh, the renewed mind. Uh, many, many areas of fear and can't even hear outside of the filter of fear that overlaps so many areas of our life. Wherever there is fear, you've got to know this. Again, this is the Word. This is the Bible. We, we've got to really go after this thing and go for that compressed way of the Word and only the Word and what it says. You know, um, Wherever there is fear, again, this is just the Bible. Many of us would love to debate this, but you can't when you look, at, look it up against the Word. We, we've got to always remember this is the plumb line. His Word is the anchor that solidifies all. And if it can't be truly nailed down and proven throughout the full Word of God and, and, and founded here, it's, there's something off and something's not renewed. So God's voice is distorted, which we can't hear clearly and accept and, and make it into an experiential reality to then walk out and so forth. Wherever there is fear, perfect love does not reside. Why? Because the Bible says perfect love, who, which is, is God, it's who He is, cast out all fear. Not some of it, not most of the time. All fear, all the time. It's not possible for God and to truly know Him and have Him dwell anywhere within you and have fear dwell in the same place. It's impossible. Fear, fear not is actually the most repeated phrase in all of the Word of God tons of times it's either be not afraid or fear not God hates fear it's not from him um, to create it in, in uh, anyway that's why the, this is one of the enemy's great methods is fear and he loves to be elevated and elevate his world because then he he thinks you're you're kind of paying attention to his schemes but he's actually creating fear and people walk in it in a subconscious way and don't know it but anyway uh, fear creates strongholds anyway but wherever there is fear, perfect love, love does not reside, which are areas of our life that we do not truly know God in or not of God. Fear is not of God. How do you not hear God when something of you is not of God? That's what Jesus said in John 8. So this, by default, makes it very hard to hear or discern God's voice in these areas. And as long as that unrenewed area is there, the devil has a heyday because, number one, he's got a stronghold. I'll show you in a second. But also it's a blockade to the voice of God. It can't get in and hear. And it causes lack of, I've seen it. Listen to me, I've seen it. There's some that are, their mind's totally renewed in the realm of healing. And they walk in healing. They believe in healing. Cast, you know, they, they'll cast out spirits of infirmity or um, heal the sick, flow in power. But their mind's not renewed into the God of abundance. And he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He desired that we all... Uh, prosper 
and be in good health, and prosper in all things, be in good health, even as our soul prospers. And, and this mind isn't renewed here, and they're, they're always walk, walk in lack. There's no generosity. There's always, they'll give, but there's strings attached because it's something I'm getting back for giving, and if not, you're going to pay me back, and there's, all, there's no generosity. And the realm of abundance is, is locked up. And even hearing God through that, it's hard to hear because it's not renewed. And so God's voice, and it's not on God's end, it's on ours. We must have our mind renewed. Or vice versa, I've seen it, where people are, there's imbalances, and all of us have a long way to go. None of us are ever perfect until we see Jesus. But may we have our mind renewed because you start to hear God's voice so clearly and fully and accurately, precisely true to who he is and his word. And when you do that, the door opens and there's true communion. And when there's true communion, there's, there's likeness in those areas. And then when there's likeness in those areas, it's, it's who you are. So now you deposit it to others. So, yeah, I have here, uh, it's not God's fault. He's speaking clearly from all of who he truly is. We just have this distorted filter over our spiritual ears called the unrenewed mind that hinders and pollutes our ability to hear, which then makes it hard to truly open that door, enabling pure deep, deep communion. I actually said all this already. I forgot it was in my notes, but that's also awesome. it was within me. So right here, I'm going to start um, trying to land it. One, two. Yeah. Watch this, okay? This is where I want to slow down a little bit. Um, Caleb, see you. Second uh, Corinthians chapter ten, three through five. The, I love this. I love this. Please, if you're taking notes, but but more importantly, just I hope it lands. Second Corinthians chapter ten, three through five. Paul's writing to the church of Corinth, gunners of the modern day gospel sloppy in a lot of areas but get most gifted spiritually powerhouses and watch what paul hits we we miss this so often and because of it, the devil has a heyday with believers and god's voice is continually not getting in clearly if at all paul writes for and it, it's in this it's in the context actually of spiritual warfare but watch how how tightly it's knit into hearing god's voice 2 Corinthians 10, 3-5 For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons, we all know these verses, but listen where we always stop. Look, the weapons, I've got a wannabe weapon, envelope, envelope opener. We do not war according to the flesh. Magnifying glass. So we put those down. That's not how we war. The weapons of our warfare, Paul writes, are not carnal. They're not carnal. I'll put that back. But mighty in God, mighty in God, for pulling down strongholds. Okay, so there's some strongholds that can take place on the dark side. And we have weapons. They're not carnal, but they're mighty. And let me see. Oh, they're in God. And therefore, the pulling down of strongholds, and we all stop there. And we don't thoroughly continue. Watch, watch actual true new, new covenant warfare at its finest. They're mighty for, this is Paul, okay, the baddest apostle in the land, wrote two-thirds of the epistles, half of the New Testament, including the Gospels. I mean, okay. Mighty for pulling down strongholds. This is big, guys, in this last hour. Anyway. And really all. Okay, so for what, Paul? Why, what are we, for what? Like how, how? How are we pulling down strongholds? How do we do that? By casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against what? The knowledge of God bringing what? Every thought into captivity. This is the renewed or unrenewed mind. This is the realm the enemy fights in. Listen, old covenant, different ball game. We're in a new and better covenant. Old covenant, Jacob takes a nap. He, he goes into a dream. There's a ladder in heaven set up on the earth. Angels of God ascending and descending. New covenant, John 151, Jesus Christ is the ladder that the angels of God ascend and descend upon. And guess where in the new covenant Jesus Christ is within us? Greater is he that's within us than he that's in the world. 
The kingdom of heaven is within. The, the Holy Ghost is within. Old Testament Holy Spirit would come upon and lift. Never possess and fill. Now we're filled with the Holy Spirit. So, so the battle nowadays is in the mind. And we, we get so busy pulling down. We're thinking strongholds. And watch when I break down the Greek here. Paul's not talking about any of that, although I, I get it. I'm very prophetic. I love all this stuff. Please don't mishear me. But I'm telling you right now, the enemy wants you looking off and pulling. And, and while your mind's not renewed, because then he's going to run your world. And you're going to wonder why years later. A anyway, watch this. They'll really break this down. For we walk in the flesh, but we don't war according to it. Okay? Our weapons of war, the mighty weapons we have, they're in God. And they are also for pulling down strongholds. Okay, how, how are we doing? Where are you going with this, Paul? Casting down arguments. And, and this is, you know why also, too, I think a lot of us miss, we miss apply this. We, it's applicated in the wrong ways because sometimes we want the spiritual galactic, you know, and, and don't get me wrong. I, I, listen to me, I know all those verses, too. I hammered, but but this definitely, this is big. And this is, you see it over and over in the New Testament, uh, Testament Romans, Corinthians, Ephesians. And he wants us out in the spiritual stronghold realm. But you, you honestly don't see a lot of that in the New Covenant. You, 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 and anyway, I'm going to get off on a whole other thing. But actually, the greatest warfare is in the, the realm of the mind, the soul. That's where it's at in the New Covenant. And the enemy loves for people to miss this. And get off it. There's so much, and, and I've seen it too over the years. Again, while I love it, I get it. I know all the verses. I support. Uh, I'm very prophetic, okay? I've just, I've seen though where it's been misconstrued and then some really crazy theologies that just aren't biblical get attached to it. They spin off and they'll take certain verses to make it work, but it's not, it, it's not conducive of the whole Word of God. It doesn't, it's not biblical. And when it's, something's not biblical, it's unrenewed. When something's unrenewed, we don't hear God. We don't hear or see God clearly, and it, it really messes things up. But anyway, watch this. For pulling down of strongholds, Paul says, "How do we? How are we pulling down? What are our weapons that are mighty and in God for for pulling down strongholds?" Oh, this is how you do it. You cast down arguments. What are arguments, Paul? Watch this. Greek. The Greek word of this arguments he uses in Second Corinthians is lo, logismos, the exact origin of from the word we get logic from. And listen to me, this is why a lot of people miss this. They don't want to think, no, it can't be. It can't be in your logic, in your mind. It sounds too natural. It sounds too heady. We want the spiritual stuff. But this is very, very spiritual. And this is why the enemy's having a heyday with people. Unrenewed minds, he's sitting on their shoulder, full legal right into the stronghold of their soul. But they're binding and strongholding and pulling, and there's still fear there year after year. There's still a misconstrued perception of, of God in this area, his nature, because of a hurt, a rejection. Um, that their minds aren't renewed and I'm telling you it's there still buying I'm okay with all this stuff But if your mind's not renewed, you're not really operating in true new covenant warfare. You see it again in Ephesians I'll touch it here in a second. This is where the true um, People walk in true victory when, when their minds renewed the enemy's like dang Dang I, I, that's messed up and they shut all the doors. I don't even have strong. I don't have that misperception anymore That's how I would get in I had that stronghold, that part was unrenewed, so I had a fear still there. That was the open door. There was still that fear there. Or what or, or whatever it is. There's there's a whole list. It's a whole other school. But watch what arguments are. Log logismos, they come from the original word logic. Listen to what it is. This is what Paul's saying our mighty weapons are for the pulling down of strongholds. Okay? Your reasoning. This is the Greek origin word of what Paul wrote calculated thoughts your thoughts or your reckoning or your considering or your logical conclusion it's in the mind the logical thought pattern um, and so the pulling down of the strongholds is casting down that wrong logic um, I said it a second ago it's a focused way of thinking the unrenewed mind and again I know we're like no way this is it's too natural it's not, it's not spiritual. It's very spiritual. The unrenewed mind is the gateway of the spirit realm, whether good or bad, and whether renewed or unrenewed. It's massive. It's your soul. 
It's the number one. Anyway, but these casting down, these arguments are casting. How do, how do we pull down strongholds that are mighty in God, Paul's saying? By casting down calculated thoughts and reasoning and wrong reckoning and considering or logical conclusions that happen. Okay? So in casting these down is how you pull down strongholds. It's just the Bible. I didn't write it. Okay, I, I love all of it, but I'm just saying if we really dig deep into the Word, this is what Paul's talking about here. Not by waving... Anyway, <laughs> sorry, I'm going to get to... I, I want to be loving, but I, I said this. The devil's having a heyday with so many believers while having legal access into their unrenewed minds, thereby distorting the voice of God if enabling people to hear God at all in certain areas. Meanwhile, we're binding, rebuking, doing prophetic acts, anointing doorways and, and, and pleading the blood. And, and I say, do all of that. I love it all. Seriously, I'll be right there with you. I think it's awesome. But if your mind's not renewed, psh, you're wasting your time. I'm telling you. According to Paul, which is the inherent word of God. This is big. And you say, well, how do I get renew, renew my mind? Romans 12. Get deep in the word, the presence he renews. You gaze at him, you shut off the other voices. Because as long as you're, you're continually hearing other voices than his, there's that conformity still trying to mold you in to what's not fully of God. Uh, and to pull down real quick, Greek means to forcibly yank down, destroy, leaving nothing standing, or even in good working order. And, and sorry if I'm stepping on anybody's toes. I, you know, you guys know I love you. I, I mean all this in love, and, and I'm t preaching to myself. We're all in it. You know what I mean. I hope I'm not. But but I just the word big that we listen in, in the freedom, in the, the oh it's just, I get excited about it. But but to pull down these strongholds, it means forcibly yank down, destroy, leave nothing standing, or even in good working order. So does that mean pull and stuff, do whatever you want? But the Bible is saying the, the, the arguments, those, those false, thought, um, false thoughts and reasoning and logic is what you've got to forcibly yank down. And I'm telling you right now, you can, you, staying full of the Holy Spirit gives you the strength because when your soul's too strong, it's hard by your spirit to, to pull them down. Your, your thought life will get away from you. It's hard to control. But we've got to start growing in maturity as believers, staying full of the Holy Spirit, don't be drunk on wine, but stay filled with the Holy Spirit, praying in the Holy Ghost, staying saturated in the presence, deep in the Word. And soon as thoughts, and many of us have, have been given our thoughts over to the, to the soulish, uh, sorry, the, the dark realm that's unrenewed, for so long, it almost seems like impossible to stop, but you just start forcibly yanking them down. Nope, and you go back to the Word and the truth. Renewed mind, and watch what will happen. The door will get closed shutter, and it'll, it'll shut tighter and tighter, and then close finally. And the enemy loses his stronghold, and that's an area now that's of God, so you can hear God. But as long as it's unrenewed, it's not a, God's looking at it going, that's not me. That's not my word. That's not my nature. I did it all already, but you must renew your mind. You must cast down arguments. This is on us. Okay? Anyway. And you keep reading, it's all the soul, the mind. It's all the thoughts in the realm. This is the how you pull down strongholds. This is spiritual warfare at its finest i'm telling you anybody that pulls their weight in the kingdom they they function in this at a high level they're like black belts they 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 walk i'm telling you, anybody that truly has great impact from the eternal side okay and you'll see it you'll see the fruit around them the growth the maturity you'll start to see them in high pressure situations and they, they faint not. They, they've been in it. And, and they, their mind is renewed. And this is spiritual warfare at its finest. I'm telling you, this is from the hands of Paul. Penned by the Spirit. And it, all three of them, they're all the mind and the soul. Casting down arguments, I just told you, comes from the word your logic, your reasoning, your reckoning, your calculated thoughts. That's how you pull down struggles. That's our weapons mighty. Not even prayer. <gasps> You know what I'm saying? But no, of course, I just hammered that. Of course, it's prayer. That's what fuels the alignment, his presence in his word. But also, the weapons he's talking about we have in God are that right there. How do you pull down strongholds? You cast down arguments that are, that are opposing against, see, I'm going to continue, or every, and every high thing, which listen to what high thing is in the Greek origin, presumption or idea that is lifted up against the knowledge of God. 
those are what you, you pull down and leave nothing remaining or in good working order. You, you forcibly go after these things. So I would encourage you guys, still do the, the blood pleading and the oil. I love it all. But this right here, we need to get militant about our thought life. Vigilant. Because it's distorting the ability to hear God clearly. And it's, it's keeping our minds unrenewed. And our, mind, our thought patterns are still conformed to the world, which is not of God. And Jesus said it crystal clear in John 8. If it's not of God, you can't hear God. The reason why you don't hear the words of God is because you're not of God. <laughs> oh, these other areas that are renewed, yet yeah, those now are of God. So that's why you hear them clearly here. But these areas, nope, those aren't of God. They're not renewed. You're not going to hear them clearly there. You see, God's done it all, given us the spirit, the word, spoken. Jesus d died, rose again. But if our mind isn't renewed, it, you know, it's big. So high thing, again, it's a presumption or an idea that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So you even see here, if our mind isn't renewed, then there are things in our soul that are lifted up against the knowledge of God. And if that area of our life does not truly know God, it cannot hear God clearly, if at all. Um, I would encourage you to begin to ask God to show you areas of your mind that aren't renewed as we would be shocked once it's illuminated by the Spirit. Because I'm telling you right now, the enemy's not going to show you. He's like, no, 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 please, let's just just keep giving me those doorways. You can bind and rebuke and do all you want, but I, I need those those doorways. <laughs> and because uh, he has legal, anyway. So let's read further. Weapons, my, weapons of warfare, not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, amazing. How do we do it, Paul? Oh, he's like, yeah, cast down your logic, your reasoning, your reckoning. Your, your calculated thought life and presumptions or ideas that are against the knowledge of God. When, when people start walking into this, the devil's like, oh, great, I got, I got a heavyweight to deal with now. This, these are serious. They, they mean business now. This is true New Covenant warfare. You know. Um, and he keeps, so he's casting down arguments, every high thing exalted against God. Then, listen to this again, bringing every thought, it's again that thought realm, into captivity, which means to take as a prisoner to the obedience of Christ. Spiritual warfare at its finest. And talk about victory and power, and all of a sudden God's voice is clear. Oh my gosh, I had no idea. And God's like, yeah, no, I've been talking. It's who I am. But you had the distortion over it. it was, I was coming out of, out of my mouth clear, but it was hitting you like thunder because it was unrenewed here. It was hitting you, and you thought it was just an angel. But it, there was unrenewed there. So take uh, captive every thought. The, listen to the Greek origin of thought now. We did log, logismos, logismos, logic. We did a uh, high thing, which is presumption or idea against the knowledge of God. Listen to thought. All three of these are what, or how we pull down strongholds in the spirit. This is how we wage war. And he's telling us to one of the top spiritual gunners of the day, Church of Corinth. Greek origin, noema, watch this, where we get the word to perceive or think from. It means thought, design of the mind. And again, a lot of us, I think, we think, no way, that's, that's new agey. The mind and just perception and logic, that's too new age. We're, we're spirit beings. We're the, but <laughs> listen, the new age is trying to steal our world. This is the dominant truth in, in all liberty possible by the blood and power and name of Jesus Christ in the new covenant we have in full relationship with him. This is the word. You know, but it's, it's here. It's just the written word. We've got thought, design of the mind, result or way of thinking. The mind's final output, how you think. And listen, when it's unrenewed, there's an immediate blockade there to hear God. Clearly, if at all, because it's unrenewed. And so this is big. Again, I think often overlooked. I don't know where a lot of these teachings come from in the spiritual battle warfare context, but they... And again, I love and support, and I get them. Listen to me, I love it. The prophet came to Paul, put a belt around him. He said, you'll be bound. I know prophetic acts. Love it. I'm going to be like, yay, let's do it. It's good. But I'm just telling you, true biblical fashion, the enemy, when he sees people with getting their minds renewed, he's like, oh, great. Great. I've got a serious problem now because this is what Paul is really talking about. The logic, the mind, every high thing lifts itself up against the knowledge of God. Thought patterns ways of, of philosophies, ideologies that are conformed. And, um, but to take captive those, it literally means um, 
I could see like if you to take captive in a, as a prisoner those thoughts. And so I want to encourage you, every time it comes, start to just battle it with fierceness by the strength of the Spirit, not in and of yourself, through intimacy. You, all, you guys know that. Everything is, is here. Um, so, uh, but like in a game of checkers, this is what it means to take captive. Say you're playing the enemy and he puts forth a checker of, of thoughts or there's, and it's not even blatant sin by any means. It's just, it's just worldly thoughts. Get behind me, Satan. You have the mind of man. It's, it's contrary to God. He'll put them forth. What you do is you jump them with the renewed mind and you take them captive. You, you've played checkers. Once you jump them, you not only take them prisoner, you, they're off the board. They're gone. They're gone. And so that's, that's what the renewed mind does. It, it takes captive those thoughts and it constantly does it. And then all of a sudden you walk in a renewed mind and God's voice is so clear and pure and you see him rightly and the distortion lifts. I'll start to land it. Um, yeah, so this verse clearly shows us that strongholds are set up in the mind. The only access point the enemy has is that which you give him through the unrenewed mind. Again, I know a lot of people don't like this. But it's just Bible. It's just Bible 101. It's New Covenant, I'm telling you. The only access point, don't get me wrong, I know the enemy takes cheap shots and overplays his hand and does things, but typically the enemy only, you know, the only access point the enemy has is that which you give him through the unrenewed mind. And he's got a doorway somewhere in there. Furthermore, as we saw earlier in John 8, it becomes very difficult to hear God as the part of who you are is not of God. And if you read further, you not only take every thought captive, but you actually take them captive into the obedience of Christ. That's why it even says, submit to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee. But with certain areas of your mind that aren't renewed, they're not submitted to God. And that's why the devil doesn't flee. There's strongholds. And then, but more importantly in this context, there's blockades to his voice and lack of experience, experientially knowing his voice and that knowledge of God in it that we don't walk it out in a, in a true applicable way. Um, Ephesians 4 23, Paul hits it again. Be renewed in the spirit of your minds. And I want to pray with you guys. Greek origin for this word he uses here is nous, and it means your mind, your understanding, your reasoning faculty and intellect. This is the word of God. And I know a lot of us, again, we're like, no, nah, it's too natural. It's too much in the mind and the logic in, in us. We're the spirit and, the, and we are. But I'm telling you right now that that area when it's not renewed, which is 100% your soul and your way of thinking and your intellect and reasoning, when it's not renewed, number one, it's, it's a gateway the enemy knows. It's his 100% means of, of battling you, period. That's why the sword of the spirit, Ephesians 6, is the word of God. Does that make sense? I can't hear you answer me, but that's why it's the Word of God, because it renews and slams the door, and the enemy just, he can't get in. So, I want to pray that, that the Lord would illuminate areas, but begin to pull us into such a deep hunger of the renewing of our mind, and of course, the first one I mentioned of yielding in such a way, making time for Him, and simplifying, shutting off the voices, leaning into this this the wise virgin company in the last hour that's single focused and watch his voice just whoo, skyrocket and illuminate and become so clear, you know. So awesome. I skipped through a good bit, but I was able to um, get it. So thank you, Lord. So let's pray. Because again, every at the end of every class, I just want to pray for a shift and, a, and an increase, the positive of heaven and, and his his presence and ways. And then we'll do um, words of knowledge, dreams and such, and communion. And I'll bless you guys. So, Jesus, we love you. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord God. I pray even now that you'd release a fresh uh, stamina, a, a, a new grace over each and every one to love you, to just simplify in this hour, cut off all the other voices, pay that price to hear your voice. To be still until we know. To wait until we ascend upon wings like eagles. The fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. 
a, a greater diligence and fervency and ability through love, not, not works, not legalism, but just complete infatuation. So a greater stamina and ability to be with you. Lock away Matthew 6, 6, close the door and be with you to where your voice can knock and then we can open it and actually commune with you. And I pray a supernatural sweeping through this class and the school and the academy and everybody at the sound of my voice, renewing of the mind in the name of Jesus Christ. Renew our minds, I pray, all of us together. Holy Spirit, illuminate areas of our mind that, that are not renewed. Recalibrate our logic and reasoning unto your, the knowledge of God, unto your word. We, we pull down strongholds by casting down arguments and high presumptions and ideas against your knowledge and wrong reckoning and reasoning and logic and thoughts we take captive which again is our mind and reasoning and understanding give us a great great grace by the power of the Holy Spirit let us stay so full of the Holy Spirit Colossians 3:16. let the word of Christ dwell richly within us that our mind might be renewed and we walk according to your way thereby your voice just coming like a deluge such clarity crystal clear booming love of all of you are that we may know you intimately first and foremost that we can hear you follow you in jesus name